Are you okay with being on camera or not being on camera? Some people say, keep me out because then I can do the spotlight. Oh, I mean, I mean, you're beautiful. Uh, obviously. <laughs> I love it. You're like, dude, of course. I came here, so I want, I want my face on your channel. <laughs> what, are you, what are you saying, man? Yeah, 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 yeah no, thank think, you. Do you, think, do you think I put on the shirt for just anyone? Do you think I'm yeah, sitting in the exactly. shirt? Is that, dude, I'm like you. I'm in my shirt, shorts and pajamas all day. What are you saying, man? No, absolutely. <laughs> I didn't, so please, uh, Christian, please continue. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the challenge, I guess, that we have is that we know that growth is not that hard to achieve. It's the quality of growth. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at at the moment is we know who our perfect uh, client is. And mm -hmm. we know that from our experience, we know mm -hmm. that from the research we're doing from, mm -hmm. from the marketplace, right? And now the challenge is that to attract the client of the sufficient quality for us and attract them in such a way that feels good in, in, in the current marketplace, right? So... What we're looking at is I'm observing the marketplace. And on this mm -hmm. side, I see people that are pumping out tons of ads, capturing people in those very spammy kind of uh, verticals. They, mm -hmm. they will bombard you on your email 20 times a day with different things that are just about them, really. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. They will bombard your LinkedIn inbox, right? Maybe they'll retarget you with some very cheap offers of something that are mm -hmm. unreasonably cheap. You know, when someone sends you like, I think that, you know, it's for five grand and they package it for 50 pounds. And you think okay. to yourself, you cannot package it for that much. And so when I'm looking at this on the opposite spectrum, I probably have maybe 100 or 200 people in London I want to work with. Mm -hmm. And so I can't burn the bridges. I can't spam them because then they will put me in the bucket with these yeah. guys. Yeah. So for us, the challenge is now unifying the marketing department we have within the business, the mentors that I have who are advising me of this, and then a few agencies, few third parties, Matter consulting for us, helping us with business growth, mm -hmm. and actually making sure that this whole thing delivers, but it does it in quality. Mm -hmm. That when I speak to these people, mm -hmm. they, they respect us, and and because we respected them in in our approach. Okay, okay, amazing. And are you just so, so just so that I understand, growth is coming quickly this year, which is great. Good problems because. There's a change in market. You guys are still here delivering good work. Clients want to work with you to not wait a year because of all of the changes that have been rolled out, maybe rolled back by Google. You are primarily positioned for that. The challenge you have right now is how to deliver the same quality with the growth that you're experiencing because you need to onboard people quickly and 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 bring together ultimately partners uh you've probably done some of course you've done a level of due diligence but they don't have they're not they're not they've not been with you for two years three years they're people that you're bringing on to support so as ever when we grow there are going to be inconsistencies even in spite of our best efforts that come up okay. where things that you intuitively know so you don't train and teach because you can't give years worth of knowledge in a 20 minute conversation great amazing you've got it fantastic and then you discover ah so 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 there's a delivery piece from what i'm hearing quality Absolutely. of growth in respect of some of our clients are upping their retainers we've got other clients are coming in and then there's also looking towards getting the same quality or uh increased quality of client within 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 london let's say you've got your dream let's just call it the dream dream 200 for the moment you're saying look there's 200 yeah. people that i want to talk to and i can't i can't fuck it up basically so there's no yeah. I, I i can you but don't want to burn the bridges right yeah, exactly because exactly you know you, you know you get classified by them right you yeah. know you know that same when mm. you receive mm. a message on linkedin you in the in an instant you're already classified absolutely is it a spammer or is it a genuine person right absolutely but then at the same time i don't want to obviously i speak to maybe two three of them a week and now how long is that going to take me then to reach it to 100 well it's going to take me a long time so yeah sure balancing it right absolutely so so let's do this so there's two buckets here there's consistent quality in the face of rapid growth so there's quality quality growth and then there's new client acquisition so absolutely. let's the let, correct one, right it's the, absolutely it's absolutely so let's talk about delivery first of all then so with delivery you are so there's two buckets are you delivering the same service to more people I think it's new services to both same people as it's well new. as some new people. Exactly that. Exactly. So when you think about the challenge, the challenge that I'm seeing in the marketplace is that Google by itself and, and that whole sphere of organic search on Google, let's call it, whether it's Bing or Google, um, the, the, the bucket is shrinking there mm -hmm. and people are frustrated with it. So they're mm -hmm. changing their ways of behavior. And then Google is obviously all interested in growing zero clicks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so they will be growing this. 
Mm -hmm. So you're kind of getting squished from two sides, right? Yeah. One is the user's behavior is different. The one vertical is getting tougher. And so the companies that we work with, they typically, some of them have 60, 70% organic traffic from Google. They never needed to build much more uh, other channels. And so they're very threatened by the situation. Mm -hmm. Then other clients we have have a very nicely balanced uh, mm -hmm. mix, mm -hmm. but it's still 20, 30% on, on Google customer acquisition cost is there. And sometimes these are their favorite users. The mm -hmm. ones that really search, the ones mm -hmm. that really put in the time mm -hmm. to find the information. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, the moment Google rolls out Google AI overviews and they suddenly cover the SERP with a big answer, much like they did for the weather websites with the mm -hmm. weather widget. I don't know if you saw this recently. They, they're testing in the States a credit card widget that basically shows 500 credit cards in a big, very big row. And so oh, you I Google the best, best credit cards 2024 and you that's it. And you're going to be stuck in this scrolling from Amex to whatever. And when I'm seeing Google do this kind of stuff, it just shows you desperation, right? Because they're using, they're losing vis visitors, uh, customers to to Amazon. So the newest test that they have on on Google AI, uh, on Google SGE, really, on the larger Google revamp, is to turn Google into an Amazon store, essentially, where sure. the left column is going to be the filters, the top column is already being personalized to the query. So, 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 thank you, and that's useful to understand the context and the different challenges your clients face. So, 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 so let me ask this then. So. The, is the so am I to assume that the new services that you're delivering in terms of the internal team that can currently deliver it, is it the case that you deliver it and therefore you need to bring in and train others or are you? Absolutely. Okay. And are you bringing yeah, it? Yeah, we, we do yeah. everything in house, right? So mm -hmm. we first, we first, so what we've decided this year is actually we grow the team very aggressively because we know we will be able to fulfill those services. Mm -hmm. We will demand for these services. I could see mm -hmm. in the marketplace, the demand is going to shoot through the roof mm -hmm. the moment that Google keeps making those changes. Yeah. And so Google kept making the changes. So people are getting frustrated with their stale growth and they need to expand their, uh, their yeah. marketing yeah. mix essentially, right? Yeah. The challenge is that with most of the SEO agencies, they just look at this one vertical. So their whole team is thinking in an SEO way. And so then the business has another agency, a PPC agency, but these guys are just saying, well, look, it's performance max is just getting more expensive. Just of give course. us 100 grand a month for the ad spend. But you know that this another 100 grand is mm. lower return mm. on investment. Mm. And so what's really lacking, what I'm seeing at the moment is, a, is a agencies that really know a searching user. You yeah. know the, the user intent? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. what platforms they're on. They're not the same user. Right? The user is ultimately crossing channels. The types of users also are appearing on new channels. So people are moving, of course, to the LLMs, ChatGPT exactly. and Bard exactly and that. not even bothering with Google. If I exactly. think about my search, my first search always now is ChatGPT. I use yeah, Google yeah. so much less. And that means the nature of my exposure is changing. And organic actually in terms of, which is ironic because a big part of my business is search but the way that i search has changed so i totally agree and we've got clients uh you know looking into how can we start appearing in chat gpt exactly as that. a recommended service provider and all, and all of the type of thing so look i'd say that there's there's there, 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 there's a couple of things within that when of course you're delivering new services to clients and there's always that worry that you have to train people and will they live up to the level of your training so Absolutely. there's a yeah, so there's a couple of things that I'd say within that. So one of the things that uh, I see that agencies don't do enough when it comes to the delivery of new services is mapping out all of the eventualities. And they do it a lot in sales, so it's role play. Let's imagine that with this delivery, we don't meet the deadline. What is our mechanism for that? Let's imagine that the result isn't as expected. So, part of, so, so when it comes to delivery, there's a delivery of the result and there's a client expectation. And, and 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 they're both connected but not the same thing of course because so 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 making sure that we can manage client communication and client expectations alongside because part of you're going to be figuring out the delivery because if, uh, if i can add to this it's not even the a, a client expectation it's a client expectation and education of all the other stakeholders and decision makers mm -hmm. behind that right because mm -hmm. it's there there is a point of receival which is the marketing team or the cmo but there's also, you know, the pressure on them from the rest of, course. of the business. Of course. So it's kind of like a, you have to, they they know why the challenge is there. You educate them and you explain it to them better. They know more about it. But then almost, we, we also started to run some training sessions internally mm -hmm. so that we can educate the rest of the company. So it's not just that mm -hmm. this one person here, our contact is telling them that, yeah. but it's actually, no, it's actually industry experts. That Makes sense. Coming in and telling this to the rest of them. Right? And, and how are you? 
are you documenting and publishing that training at scale for the different decision makers? See, that's the see. This is what I mean about like our own marketing. The, the typical shoemaker about shoes, right? We do mm -hmm. all this stuff. We come into someone's office with the presentation, and it's all recorded for that business, and everyone's happy there, and we get great feedback. And we don't even have it on a website, literally. Like okay, we don't even okay, have a service, okay. right? So, so the, the good thing there so that, is that would be brilliant, right? What, what you're saying, right? So, that would be that would be that thing, right? So it's a technical problem because you just need a person who can go through the content that you do record on those days and then chop it up to make it ready for repurposing. Mm -hmm. So I think that that sounds like it's a big opportunity to then educate people across your business internally as well as externally. So pulling out excerpts, of course, from a four hour workshop that you do. So in as much as you can, building a mechanism to scale what's happening in your mind to the different people within the different orgs that you speak to. So you've got your internal org, you've got your contractors that you communicate with because they're not boots on the ground in quite the same way as your FTEs are because they're contractors, they're coming in and it's new and they might not have the same level of buy-in, but that doesn't mean that everyone shouldn't have the same level of access to your knowledge Very because true. they need the same access. So first of all, making sure that that gets proper exposure in a way that stops you from repeating yourself. So that's a technical problem that you can resolve. Cool. The cameraman comes in. Okay, amazing. We get the content unfiltered recorded. We then can use an AI tool to figure out all of the timestamps. But then within that, we give it to an editor who says, we need to cut out these areas because they're not going to be relevant and they're sensitive. But that's something that you can hire on a project basis to say, this is the gig, get a contract to come in. So, so we've got a technical part there. Now, the second problem that often comes as a result is that do people actually pay attention when they watch his content? Because the state of internal distraction, you can give everyone source material and then people can pick up 10% of it. And you can say, but you have all of the answers. So what you then need to build in, we go back to the academic education system, is that you need to build in tests. Mm -hmm. So you need to also use the AI to extrapolate based upon all of my teachings, come up with 50 questions that could demonstrate whether people are actually understanding the content that I provided. So then you build the education, but what this is the gap in a lot of agencies, they don't test what people have learned. Very true, yeah. They just get a uh, self-reinforcing feedback. Like, Did you learn Deepak? Absolutely, I understood everything. Tell me a little bit about it. And they give you the 10% that they do learn, but then we suffer from a mission bias. I don't tell you what I haven't learned because I don't even remember or don't realize that I've not learned it. So testing is a big thing because then it benchmarks everything. So that's a way that you can accelerate that. We instituted that in our organization very recently. And there's tools that you can find online. We use a company called Test Gorilla. It does aptitude tests, but you can build in custom tests. So we, cu cool. we custom test. So what we do is we have people that come in, let's say we've got XYZ experience, but then we do time tests as part of onboarding. So they have to, it's got browser IP fingerprints, it's got a webcam recording when it's on. If you go out of the camera, instant fail. If you switch browser, instant fail. And we say, great, you've got all of this experience. Tell me the difference between a 404 and a 410. Tell me how you deal oh, with yeah. this sitemap issue. Great, <laughs> amazing, fantastic. You passed or you didn't pass. Try again, no problem. Amazing. Here's all of our training material. Fantastic. 30 days out, here's your test. Great. Right. You can't get your salary pay rise that you requested or your probation is extended because you didn't pass the actual exam. So what you say you learned, you didn't learn. This has changed our organization. That's also clever with the external training, right? Because if I did workshops and, and training courses for ex externally, if we recorded them, we gave them a certificate based on it as well. People like to... People like to accomplish this kind of like LinkedIn certificates and things like that I'm seeing, right? So it has many it, use cases. You, if you train yeah. organizations, you can then provide them the tests for the actual Yeah, that's training. what I'm thinking. Yeah, because because then themselves, you know, internally, they, they probably suffer from the same thing. You know, we've said yeah. in their scenario, you know, we've sent 20 people for training. We paid for it X amount of money. Did they really learn it? They didn't they, learn, you didn't learn anything. Oh, I gave right? you, it's, it's, it's the biggest problem because the information for most answers are out there but you can't gauge in a remote environment or even in office because it's tantamount to the same thing. Did you pay attention, bro, to the last one hour? Because from what you're telling me, you think you've learned, but you've misunderstood everything. Or so we test and we test at least because then we can. So that will help massively. So building the recording to 
ensure or the repurposing of the recording however that so then you can begin to of course do the whole con the whole gary vaynerchuk chuck thing repurpose re chop slice it'll be a bit of a process you'll figure it out but that will help of course and then test everyone internally as well as your contractors to distinguish what people say they know or what they think they know versus what they actually know and it's very very often not the same thing so we rely upon the test to say, well, you've missed on, you don't know the difference between a 404 and 410. You don't really understand this feature, which is very basic within Screaming Frog, that actually tells me you say you know how to use Screaming Frog, but you watched a tutorial once. That's so you're not, a, yeah. you're not a Screaming they, Frog they expert. Can it, they can run it, they can read a few screens, but can they really actually extrapolate real actionables from it? That's mm, a whole different mm. feature, right? Exactly, exactly. And, and, and it's that's okay. I just know where you're level is that and as a consequence we build appropriately for not where you think you are but where you actually are and and and, and we need to build in building in mechanisms for that will help mm -hmm. it will help massively so 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 i would say focus on those two areas with the delivery side and education especially if you say that you're giving education currently in a closed door format to yeah. different stakeholders let's open the door and, yeah. and, and and of course, not everyone will listen and there'll be other problems that come up with it, but it'll be definitely a big step closer to your cobbler's shoes problem saying, OK, you know, I'm a cobbler, but I, I look at my shoes so you can you can begin to fix that. I think that that's that bucket. Is there anything else on the delivery side that you feel is a talking point before we move to the acquisition side that you think has not been covered by that broadly? Yeah, so with the with the delivery, much uh, much like you mentioned, right? The challenge is education. The challenge is quality, consistency. Mm -hmm. Definitely, mm -hmm. one of the challenges is that because the campaigns are very bespoke for each of the clients, they have to be built up, mm -hmm. right? and, and so the whole process for that, right, is is also a challenge, right? Uh, so what what we're deploying is a system where rather than having a campaign that's like a general campaign, just get these guys more visitors. Uh, we're looking specifically at achieving a given business objective. So mm -hmm. a given, a very targeted audience with a very particular KPI attached to it. Uh, and then at least we can say, look, our very custom campaign has delivered on this very custom KPI for your sure. particular audience. But the challenge is basically that you have to build it from almost from scratch every sure. time at the moment. Sure. I'm sure that like in half a year's time, when we've got like 20, 30, 40 of them behind us, then we will probably categorize them and template them so up in a way really easier, right? So here's what we do. I absolutely understand. When you have to build a delivery mechanism that you don't currently have a process for, or what will probably happen in your case, the process is in here, and you think, well, how do I scale that? And I don't even, because you intuitively know what some of the answers are. What we do in instances like that, and what's worked well for us is you will go onto a call with the anyone in your delivery team you spend 15 minutes at length talking about how you would deliver it. You, We turn that into a timeline and SOPs using AI. So we turn, get the transcript. We then ask the AI to identify all of the weaknesses in the proposal and the strategy. I give or you would give all of your answers. And then we ask our team to turn that into a timeline, Trello, whatever, and say, these are the KPIs and action points. And then, of course, because you cannot just leave it like that, because things will go out, there'll be things that will be missed, but but a regular check-in with the process. Now, naturally, because it's new, mm -hmm. there'll be things that we all discover along the way that won't be yeah, part yeah. of that original, original conversation. There'll be circumstances, context, and things that didn't appear. That's where we go back to the level of client communication and conversation and how much buffer time of course you can build in to figure out these problems which as seos we always have buffer that's built in now it's performance marketing the buffer might change because a proponent of that might be paid media and problems arise and expectations are different with paid media versus mm -hmm. seo so of course that may influence the whole dynamic of some of the relationships because they say great christian we're doing seo for 3k 5k a month I also am going to give you some of our paid budget, but now my expectation of dialogue and leads and updates changes overnight. 
and, it's and, bit... and that it has to be instant. Correct, correct. At the same time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where, of course, as you move into paid media, your ability to manage client challenges, because when the results speak for themselves, the results speak for themselves and it's okay. But it's the value all comes in, well, if the result isn't coming as quick as expected or if their expectations aren't realistic, how do we manage that? So I'd say, I'd say in, you know, in those, in those situations, because that's so, so, so there's two parts of it, right? There's the building the process. So doc, again, document it, record it, build it out. There'll be problems with it, no doubt. But if you're the person who has the fountain of knowledge, or I have the best fountain of knowledge, Deepak, but there's always going to be holes in my own knowledge as well, because I don't know 100% of the scenarios, but I've got a understanding of how to get there. Then of course, you being the first man in. So when we deliver projects that, so for example, we've got a project recently that came in and it started as a £3,000 a month SEO project. So the client, the the, the sale, our managing director, Eon, signed it off. I went to the onboarding call with the client because he said, oh, Deepak, this is a big client. I'd like you to be there for the onboarding call. It quickly became apparent that there was no way we could deliver on any of the objectives because their website was stuck in transition between a combination of WordPress and React JS, right? Okay. And then it was very clear that we would have to ultimately pause or refund the money because there was no way we could deliver on anything because we couldn't change anything te technically because we weren't a React JS development agency. Or a... we now are developing their site fully in React JS. Mm -hmm. Now, now we're not a React JS development agency. The retainer though went from three thousand to thirteen thousand pounds a month. The only way to win the SEO work was to get the web development work done. And I, in that project, stayed involved until about three weeks ago for the first two months because mm -hmm. I had to be there because there were so many unknowns, even for me, of course, because I said, right, well, for, they knew that we'd find a React.js development, development partner. They were happy for us to bring it on but they expected their same deliverables from a web development project. So okay. there will be a proportion of the work where, and this is stuff that's burned me historically, what I, I left too early because I wanted to play CEO more than being scrappy and saying, well, Deepak, you have to get back into the trenches and with this work, just be involved every meeting, every time. So for the first two months of that project, and we're about four months into it now, uh, and it was about three weeks ago i stepped away from everything but for the first three months or that period for the first two months i was heavily involved because yeah, i was I learning yeah the start of those kind of very advanced projects it's uh i think it's difficult to hand over the reins but also i think you have to make a very good call on what when it's finally set up mm -hmm. right because otherwise you would be forever stuck in all of the projects in a way right but you, yeah. you don't need it after the initial stage because i, I find the same right it's the the strategy, the strategy building, actually figuring it all out, setting it all up, and then yeah, a month after, month, two months, three months later, I can typically uh, be a lot less engaged, right? But mm -hmm. the, but the initial thing does you, you're kind of sometimes the only person in your business that, that can do that part, right? That Absolutely. Can all those dots, right? Now, now the biggest other challenge that we have when it comes to delivery and fulfillment, and it, it does relate to new business acquisition also. Is that well? How can we find more people that are aligned with my goals and care about the business in the way that I do, and have the mindset to learn the additional things? Yeah. Which is a big struggle for that. You know, we we say it's people, Deepak. I can't find the people that can deliver at the same level. The 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 area, and we'll we'll move on to. I know that we've got another 10, 10 15 minutes, and we'll move on to client acquisition a piece. But the other biggest change that has allowed me to step away. It took me too long to learn it, if I'm being asked, because I spent several years focusing on tactics and strategy. Let me teach you the tactic. Let me give you the strategy. Let me try and get as good people as possible. But I didn't work on the mindset and discipline of the team. So that has been a bigger change for me than the tactics and strategy. Much, much bigger. Because when I worked on the mindset that the way that you, for example, Christian, can double your income at Pearl Lemon is by figuring out the problems or figuring out the solutions to all of these problems. And that's how look, you, there's, a, there's a life that you want. There's a salary that you want. There's 
you of course want to be the guy who looks at the right side of the, uh, the the left side of the menu, not the right side. All of the stuff we hear about, but it's true. It's true. We don't want to worry about how oh, I need to budget for my next holiday. I said my ability to double your income rests upon, if I'm being honest, that Saturday morning when you're going to the park with family or friends sitting on screaming frog tutorials and figuring out a new way to deliver better at a technical level and being on it. So that was, I think, a... that's, I think that changed the wire back. You know, I think, I think that how long ago did you start in this? This part of it changed in, where are we now? January this year it made the biggest, biggest change to my company when Same. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I aligned people's why, because the problem often isn't that the answer, the problem is never that the strategies aren't there. You can go onto one YouTube channel and you could learn enough to deliver SEO at a high level, but no one does it. Why? No one, no one spends their evenings anymore, right? I think back back in the day, I think it was different. You know, when I when I started in, in this industry 16, 17 years ago, maybe even longer, um, I think the expectation was that it, this is a growing field, so you're learning it, right? Mm. And these days, I think because of the, I don't know if it's people being less ambitious or because of the overload of SEO knowledge, but it's almost like there is, back in the day, we didn't have anything. You had to like, you had to invent it, you had to borrow it, you had to figure it out. Someone had to like, in a dark circle of the closed internet communities, you had to just figure it out between yourselves, right? Test it. And these days, it's all out in the open. You know how to do everything, but no one is learning all of it, right? It's almost like yeah. they, they know they can look it up, so they're not learning it. But yeah. Then later on, when you come to a problem, you can't just figure it out because you haven't learned all of it, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a challenge. And and also these days, uh, I think back in the day there was a lot more of a grind culture. Yeah, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. Gary Gary Vaynerchuk, right? Like that, it was normal to work 18, 18 yeah. hour days. So he was like, "I'm going to fucking outwork you, young guys." That's my yeah, advantage. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will outwork you exactly like that, right? And so when I was looking at this, it was very normal for me to like get up, get up at five, maybe something like this, do my gym session, be at work at seven, seven thirty, work until four, four thirty, and then learn all evening after dinner, mm. and then go to sleep at ten or eleven, and repeat mm. it every single day. And it was a normal thing for me because I knew I need this time to get all the knowledge. In. Yeah, yeah. And these days, everyone is like, how can we work less? So we return back to your training again, because if you're able to project that mindset and that attitude in a way that's potentially scalable, that could, and this was a big learning for me that I need to do what Googlers or Google have done with their work culture. I need to build a culture that people love being here, understand the path, the mission and the vision, and therefore will make best use of the tools and the training that's available to them. And that made more changes than any other SEO tactic that I've actually given to my team or account management tactic, which was the way that you win is that you really take in the information that exists and is available to you. So then bucket number three, and let's move to client acquisition in the last 10 minutes, the, 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 the dream 200 would be also build content, not just for the stakeholders, build content for the minds of the people that you're going to hire that will come in. So having a employee onboarding indoctrination process will make a big difference. I'm going to yeah. talk to you about my mindset, my work ethic, why I do what I do, how I doubled the revenue of the company in a year, how it's changed my life, and how, if you're with me, I intend to change yours. Now watch my seven-hour training on how to use Screaming Frog most effectively. Because before that, people would be like, oh, okay, I'll watch it, and I'll kind of do this and do that, and say, yeah, yeah, I know it, I know it, great. And then down the line, you think, why don't we spot this issue with canonical tags? You didn't look at the screaming. You don't know how to use screaming frog, do you? And that yeah. won't manifest until two months down the line, or even two days down the line. So I'd say that the irony of it is that it part of it rests on how do you scale your thinking, your philosophies, your mindsets, and your understanding. Just just get that recording thing down because the knowledge is yeah, all there you, within how you. How do you pass it on in the right way to many people at the same time, right? Yeah, That's especially as you part. grow. Yeah, 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 very true. Yeah, I'm noticing it now, you know, we've got a few new team members and I'm like, okay, we're doing a training session for a client. Actually, let's do it for the client and for the team at the same time. Yeah. And yeah, like you say, maybe let's record it straight away. And then it's like... Uh, exists. And it's there, right? Yeah, yeah then, it, it's then the next person joins, we already have our own assets then, right? That exactly, are... exactly. Because if you're repeating some of this knowledge, then document everything and put it into a consumable format for both your team 
as well as the, your clients and it will and we're not we're, you know it will improve the the the, the base the, the the average people will be slightly better especially as if you're the base you're the source of knowledge the bigger you grow the further of course your team gets away from base and yeah. the dilution of quality away from base because that's the biggest challenge that we rush and i want to hire someone like me or is it more realistic to train someone up who could become me practically what's feasible hiring me in the marketplace might cost me 90 120 grand i probably can't afford that as a small business owner right now which is the reality for most agencies because this is not the economics that we live in so then the question is is that well how can i build someone of that caliber and i think that that's as i've grown been one of the big challenges when we were 10 it was very very different from when we then became 50 and then now 75 across the different businesses and it was like okay what I was doing when I was smaller, sitting around our little war room, is more difficult to do now. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, fighting the same. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And these guys don't really give a shit. They're not. They're not. They're not connected. So, so, so these are some of the the challenges. But yeah, begin. It begins. The the the, the small answer is record fucking everything, <laughs> and then see what you can begin to do to chop that up, and then test everything that you've given to people uh we use test gorilla there's many alternatives out there try that and, and and that's what's working for us so let's briefly then talk about client acquisition so what are you already doing for client acquisition at the moment just so i understand context because you've got your clients right now and sure. ha, ha, you know because there's yeah, some, so we're, yeah. we're very fortunate to have grown like many agencies for the refer referrals mm -hmm. you, know, you do you do a good job someone refers you to another client uh, someone moves on from another from a business but they loved working with you so they take you into the new business and introduce you so this has been like a very large uh, part of this then we've got a sec like, like our second segment is the partnerships with different agencies mm -hmm. so they should just say oh we, we're building a website can you help us in the migration because we need to make sure that the client maintains their visibility or grows it and, and doesn't drop it right yeah uh, rebranding exercises and this kind of stuff launching mm -hmm. to new countries new territories so that worked in terms of partnerships and we're still growing that part uh, but then the new thing I'm trying to actually do is to be a lot more targeted with that outreach because in the past it was by luck. And then what happens is that one of the challenges that we have is we've got a cli uh, clients in different verticals, in D2C, B2B. It's all very mixed in terms of sizes and, and everything else, right? Everything's mixed. And so then we found, okay, actually we are most efficient. Uh, we, we can provide the greatest ROI in kind of high ticket B2B. Okay, great. So now I don't want to speak to just any CMO in London. I want to speak to a CMO who's in a high ticket B2B environment. Sure. And then which which high ticket B2Bs are there, right? So then you look at different verticals in those markets where maybe we should just pick a few of these markets. And then at the end of this, I came up with the number of the 200 because I'm like, okay, actually, like that looks to me like there is about 200 of them in London. That's a number that I can go with each one of them uh, for a dinner and I can actually meet them. But even that is difficult because it's two or three of them per week. That's going to take me, you know, next 70 weeks <laughs> to meet them one by one bit of time, right? So now we're looking at potentially doing some in-person stuff. But then the challenge is that, you know, you try to, you saw those kind of e-commerce breakfasts and, and mm -hmm. some other events and stuff like that. You do a daily event, well, no one's got time for this. You do the breakfast you just eat i don't know those breakfasts i don't i, I i'm kind of like the morning person so I, I couldn't sit there eat the breakfast and then go back to work i'm more like like I, I eat something super quick then i eat at the end of the day that's the end of my work now right yeah. so for me like so we're organize we're looking to organize lunches on friday mm -hmm. with such a view that it's an educational lunch you sit there you eat it you enjoy the education part you have a few drinks you go home right this is your friday afternoon it's education and some food Alcohol, not really, I, you know, I'm not really into that kind of stuff, more of a coffee drinker. Why, why aren't you, so, oh no, let me rephrase. Are you working to speed up the referrals yeah. that you get from your current clients? Kind of like this, right? Because the way I saw it is that, look, if I can, like, I know what my network, how strong my network is, and it's very strong. However, mm. I know these are the best clients we get. The best ones are from referrals, right? And then you're not against five other agencies that are going to um, mm -hmm. sell a cost, right? And so for me, it's like, great. These guys know we're already good. Um, they're already within our network, but I need to expand my network. But then I don't just expand it, expand it, and like I was saying, spam them with some short-term tactic just to get in front of them. Like, I know that, how would I want to be 
market at all, right? Are you are you take value. are you taking your current clients out for lunch and asking them to oh, bring a course. friend? Yeah. yeah, of course. Ah, oh no, I didn't think about that. Okay, so the answer is simple: invest your energy into understanding how you can scale referrals with the clients you already have, because that works for you. So mm -hmm. lunch with a friend, bring your bring your boss. I'll pay for you and your boss. Organizing meetups with their network or several of their colleagues because maybe their colleagues have friends at other agencies. Maybe their colleagues also oh, yeah. leave, leave the company because if you've got four people that are in a department, within a year, yeah, one a of them might leave. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's such, a, such a great point, man. That's it. I would so. Alex Hormozzi talks about this concept of more, better, new. You have a process that already works for you. Just yeah, yeah, figure exactly. out how to do more of that. So you have great relationships with them. Aim to say, I want to have three friends who I could call on a Saturday at the same company because that will 3x my ability. And then from those three friends, Frank, Richard, and George, I'm going to then see if they can invite one friend each from outside the company. How, uh, you know, and, and 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 that can be your goal. Double your network through your already happy clients. Just say, look, just bring a friend along. I'll buy them lunch as well. And and of course it won't always work, but that doesn't matter. Referrals work and 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 you can then record content there. And then you can then ask them to send it on to you can do into there's lots of stuff that you could do with it, of course, in terms of content repurposing. That's not a problem. But start with the process that's already working for you and invest more energy there and see what result that that gets back before you invest in a new idea because there's dead bodies everywhere you just don't know where they're buried it's very, very it's very easy to go out to the marketplace use do three months of marketing strategy execution preparation tactics and everything else and then find out that was wasted three months right find out that you know what my old strategy that i've been using for years works, was better was better <laughs> because i have the proof because that's how we doubled our revenue great yeah, okay, stay as close to that as possible as you can and then just do that and do that definitely don't move into different streams just work with the stream you have and say how can i magnify this relationship who does he know who's in his network why don't i look at his linkedin connections and ask him if he can bring xyz person to the lunch or why can't he make introductions to me especially if i become mates and say you know i'm trying to grow my business frank you just like make me some linkedin introductions dude i just give you you know 500 pounds off a month imagine just give me three introductions five introductions a month and i'll just knock off 500 quid you know what it's company money i'll pay you 500 quid same thing no problem so i'm talking 100 quid an intro yeah. if, if, if if you've got good enough relationships like that people will do it for you they'll be like i get it I get it, Christian, yeah, you're trying no, to grow so... and I support you. So on that note, my summary points are one, record everything, edit, repurpose, chop it up for your client team, for your client delivery and for internal, it will help. Then test everything for both your clients and sell it as a package. We not only train, we test and then we do follow-ups based upon all of the gaps in their knowledge. So it's a two-part series, increase the value because we also have a process to ensure the knowledge is actually communicated because two weeks later, here's a test. And then based upon that, we do a follow-up session. Which package would you like, Mr. Client? Package one or package two? Oh, I take the test because all I care about is real-world implementation. Amazing. You test your team in the same manner. You discover who's really paying attention and it generally increases the efficacy of your team because if they know they're going to be tested it changes everything yeah, about their approach to put more effort, right? yeah, yeah. Like christian's gonna fucking test me and if i don't i have to pass the test to pass probation or to build this relationship oh wow i don't i, I want to beat frank frank's an asshole or frank's great i aspire to be like frank whatever and then the third point is expand your network with the com people you already have as opposed to trying to just build new relationships that's it Sounds great, man. That Amazing. Useful. <laughs> Dude, all good. You're welcome. I will wrap this up and I'm going to bounce to, uh, let me, well, thank you. All good. You're welcome.